end of this ban phase. I apologize for getting in to the draft just a little bit late. Was finishing up some final preparations. Team Red with first pick decide to go for the Vengeful Spirit. Meanwhile, Team America, they've got two picks to rebuttal with. There's heroes like Sand King and Ancient Apparition, if not just the duo that they can draw from in their first picks. There's a variety of strong heroes still there as well. The Pangolier is valued by some teams, as is the Dark Willow. And Team America going for the Rubik, though. Another fairly popular support hero that we see, I would say, a, a respectable amount of. The hero is very flexible. The hero can kind of fulfill a lot of different roles. And... The better the spells Team Red has, the more potential there is for the Rubik to really make some very significant plays. So Red going to have to be mindful of their spell usage, especially this Vengeful Spirit not wanting to give away Swap or Magic Missile to this Rubik. So that will likely be their five position. Uh, it's probably worth mentioning that some teams do occasionally run the mid Rubik, but it is incredibly unorthodox, and I wouldn't say it is at all likely. Team America will be looking for, I imagine, an offlane or four in this next pick, and they go for that Tide Hunter. A durable hero, reliable, it's a solid laner, great team fight, scales reasonably well thanks to Ravage and how impactful Ravage can be in the late game and really at every stage of the game. I don't think he'll have any problems in his lane, uh, no matter what he's against, largely because he's very tanky and because he's going to be able to go into the jungle, worst case scenario. Red, meanwhile, grabbing Monkey King, they will probably run it as a support on Root. Root has played, played this hero the last time I cast for them. I believe it was last week. Uh, and this, I think it's okay for Tide if he hits him with Anchor Smash, but even Tension then, Jingu Mastery mitigates a lot of the impact of the, the Anchor Smash, whereas normally Tide isn't going to be losing right-click trades nor taking much damage to them thanks to Kraken Shell, thanks to Anchor Smash. Monkey King, I think, does fairly well against the hero. America banning out the gyrocopter uh, across the board. I think a fine carry. I don't know that there's anything really extremely spectacular about the gyro, but when you sit and you ask yourself, what hard counters a gyro? Or what is gyro bad at? There's not a lot of answers that come to mind. The hero is flexible. He does well at every stage of the game. He scales. He team fights. He can do pickoffs. He's just a good hero. Uh, and the nerfs he received, I don't think, have done anything to really push him away. However, Red removed that Dragon Knight, one of the more popular mid-heroes, but this does leave OD and Death Prophet. OD did suffer, did get banned, actually, but it is worth noting he suffered pretty badly from the Hurricane Pike nerfs, the man both the mana cost increase, the health regen reduction, as well as um, just getting a couple nerfs himself. And Arcane Orb costs a little bit more mana, I believe. So it, his damage has been reduced a little bit. Ten seconds remaining. We'll see. It, it's a little too soon to say the hero is dead after the patch or not, I think. Five seconds remaining. Um, we'll see how it develops over the next few weeks. But Team America, they don't want to answer to that question just yet, just in case the answer is not something that they're necessarily going to be happy with. So they ban it out while Red removing the Shadow Fiend in America with their next support, picking up the Winter Wyvern. Turn that Venge aura against her allies. Uh, this is a little bit restrictive in what kind of carries you want. Like if you were planning on doing like, I, I'm not saying you can't, but you have to be very mindful if you run like Beastmaster, um, Invoker, Lycan. Those kinds of heroes can kill themselves. Or Visage is another example. They can just die thanks to the Winter Wyvern's ult. Uh, also great D push. D very strong laning, uh, excellent against Monkey King, as he has entirely physical damage except for Primal Spring, and Red gonna need to, and, and if a uh, Wyvern gets Glimmer Cape, kind of shores up the weakness of, oh, okay, they can, um, they can just magical burst, because of course the Glimmer Cape helps a lot with reducing that. So I like the Wyvern pick. It depends on what Red are going to go for for their offlaner. And they do go for their mid as the Death Prophet. I think that hero is great. She got a couple small nerfs the past couple of patches. But she, overall, very, very good. You've uh, Spirit Siphon makes her a lane bully. Gives her durability in team fights. Um, team pick. Pushes well. And Team America go for the Invoker. I want to say this is Death Prophet favored. Death Prophet loses lane to very bursty heroes. Invoker 
has burst, but I don't think of him as this like ludicrously bursty hero. Um, he would need to land the Slunge Strike to be sure. Otherwise, in a sustained battle, even with the Cold Snap going, if Death Prophet manages to get Miss or not Miss Coil, uh, Spirit Siphon off onto him or a support that's ganking, it will be hard to kill him. So I think the Invoker gonna need some help from his supports, but he's a good duo that can easily roam to set up for some kills with the Invoker. And Winter Wyvern's E, great against Exorcism. It doesn't do anything to Spirit Siphon nor to Crypt Swarm, but Exorcism is the bulk of the Death Prophet damage as the game goes on. Of course, Spirit Siphon not to be underestimated. Team Red, this could be a core Monkey King, but I suspect it is roaming. Now looking for a safe laner and an off laner. A lot of good off laners have been banned out. Omni Knight, Underlord, Axe, Tide has been picked. Even Dragon Knight, some teams run with the dual lanes. They could always go for, I guess I'll just throw out the Pangolier. Um, Bat Rider might not be a bad option this game. They don't have a ton of great counters to it on Team America. Unless, you know, Winter's Curse, I guess, but. It would also probably win the lane. Uh, even if they ran it 1v1 against the Tide, it would just wreck that hero. So I like Bat a lot. And Red going for Morphling as their core. Neo playing this hero most, most likely. Um, Winter's Curse is good against him, except he's going to get a Lincoln Sphere. Very tanky. I like this pick. It's going to do some good work, I think, in this uh, in this game. Going to be slippery. I mean, he's made of water. But they do have decent control options on Team America. You have Tornado, EMP, Winter's Curse, Ravage, Lift. So they can kill him. It's not impossible. And Winter Wyvern's Arctic Burn actually is a decent damage spell against the hero, thanks to it doing percent of current HP. So as he's getting HP through Morph, it still kind of applies a respectable amount of damage. But... If Morphling gets a, gets you know has a good lane, it could be very difficult to kill him once he gets a Lincoln Sphere. Or he could even go for BKB at some point in the game to really, really wreck Team America's chances or hopes in team fights at, at killing him. So Red are likely looking for their off laner. They could run dual lanes. America looking for their safe laner. Uh, Luna is still an option for off lanes. It's hard for me to think of any that are particularly strong right now uh, that haven't been banned. I suppose they could go for Darkseer. Um, Darkseer combos well with their team if they want more team fight, as does the Pangolier. But with the most recent patch, several heroes have been changed, so it's kind of hard to say, as a lot of heroes got buffs and nerfs, and it, it it's still, people are still kind of figuring out what's really good. Um, I believe Sand King is also still an uh, is still something that Team America could pick up. They could offlane Tiny, Radiant team. but Team America actually banning Sand King themselves. Team Red. Uh, oh, what what am I saying? They're looking for a carry. Team Red are looking for an offlane. So the Sand King ban, great from Team America. Red could for their offlane. Now that Sand King is banned, there's Tiny. Ten seconds remain. They could offlane Void. I think it's risky. Five seconds remaining. Beastmaster, still there. It's risky against Winter Wyvern, of course, but that doesn't mean it's unpickable. Red removing the Anti-Mage and going for Brewmaster, another one of those heroes. I think he's kind of fallen out of favorability. He's much less picked, but still reasonably popular. Um, it depends on what America picked for their their safe lane. Since Gyro's not there, I think pretty much everything still available is good, and they go for that Terror Blade, a hero that got some serious nerfs. I'm not actually sure where this hero stands balance-wise. Um, again, with the patch being just yesterday, a lot of teams are still leaning on the stuff that they've been playing, and that's definitely better than just trying to do new stuff. And Team Red, this is a draft that they look really comfortable with. I've seen them play a lot of these heroes before. Team America, I have not seen, but I do know that Red is almost undefeated. And Team America, I hear, have not done super well in the AD2L, so we'll see how they manage to play through this game and if they can kind of surprise anybody. Game one about to get underway here between Team Red and Team America. Looking at the drafts, 
There is a massive team fight potential on Team America. They clearly picked heroes that they're comfortable with, at least the Rubik and the Invoker. But um, Prepare for battle. Team Red also playing Comfort Heroes here, as I've seen them play in the 82L a lot. Noobles playing Brewmaster, Root on the Monkey King, here he has just ruined offlaners' lives with before. Mist on Death Prophet Kung, playing Vengeful Spirit, and Neo on the Morphling. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, it's the Donald playing the Terror Blade. Zombie on Tide Hunter, Invoker played by Sicko, and on Magic Guy's Winter Wyvern with Rubik. Satanic Spliff. I wonder if they're going to run this as a tri lane with their off laner. Try to have the Turbulent in a 1v1 against Brew. Really risky as Brew does very, very well against melee cores, especially in 1v1s. He's got dodge chance, crit, and a blind with an attack speed slow. This hero's kit is built around winning 1v1s, or at least setting 1v1s in his advantage against right-click based heroes. He's very weak against magic damage and America don't have a lot of that so I think this brew is going to have a great time but I think Tide will have a slightly worse time. Not a horrible time though. Monkey King. Root maybe gonna try to steal this. You don't want to get the Jingu on you. It's only 50-60 damage at level 1. And I don't know, Root might need to be careful. He does get the bounty though. So will he pay with his life? They've got another Anchor Smash coming up. He's got Jingu back and a Sun Strike, but he's not dead yet. They need one more hit onto him. Will he be able to deny himself? Will he be able to get away? He's gonna need to TP. He doesn't have the jump. No tree dance, but can he hide in the trees? He's found by Magic Guy. He turns into a tree. They need to right click it. And Root leads them on a bit of a, of a chase, but I think, no, he might actually get away. He's so low, but there's no Sun Strike up on the Invoker. It is, but they're going to need to try to snipe it. He might actually TP out. He's getting in through the... Ooh, nicely done, Root. Making fools of Team America. And terribly trying desperately to last hit while blinded. Duh. It's rough stuff. And Nubles going around trying to pull this second wave. You can no longer... But the smoke might actually stop that. However, he does right-click it. You can no longer pull the first wave, so off laners are simply waiting and smoking up maybe or sneaking around to try to pull the second wave of creeps so that they can guarantee that they get experience. Mid invoker versus death prophet. I I want I again I said in the draft I think this is death prophet favored. She's just got more options early on with the help of the forge spirit and a cold snap he might be able to get a kill though. That bot, this aggro tri lane up against the dual lane root. Getting bullied a bit, so they're trying to keep the Monkey King at bay, trying to keep him from getting Jingu off. However, running a dual lane down here, in terms of experience, unless they can kill this brew, or maybe kill root, or get some kills down here, I think it is, it is a, a minor loss. Just in terms of experience, the the brew is going to be higher level than the tide. However, he's now brawling up. He gets the blind up against the metamorph. He's got to be cautious against that. It's a lot of damage, but it is only rank one, so not as much as it might have been. He's got a clap up again. He might try to find a kill. Spiff getting low. He's got the blind and a clap now. He can slow him, but does he really want to commit to this? Save his mana for the spam for the W and just go back and get some XP. It's just so hard for them to kill this brewmaster, if not impossible. Tide on her soaking XP in the trees, but a tree stalking him. I'm not sure they can kill him. They've got rank one waveform, no boundless strike, so he can probably walk away. But Nubles is level three. Then again, Neo, a small bit behind the Donald as he's got his two supports with him. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Venge or Monkey King or both just begin to roam once they feel like this lane is going to be comfortable enough for Neo on the Morphling. The Root just getting harassed back by the Winter Wyvern. Ah, uh, Spliff, you gotta wanna be careful, buddy. The second rank in the clap. A lot more damage, 175, big or slow.
Looking at the CS, looks like it's even in terms of the safe laners, but Sicko having a few issues keeping up with Mist. With a gank um, from the Rubik and the Wyvern, they can probably kill this Death Prophet. It'll be difficult thanks to Spirit Siphon, but it is doable. Uh, the same can be said, though, a gank from the Monkey King, who is now coming into the mid lane. Sicko sees him. Breaks his Invis. He's got one rank in the bound to strike now, but Root trying to get that Jingu. Cold snap onto him. Death Prophet missed. Trying to get in range. The bound to strike comes out, stunning up Sicko, but unfortunately missed. Not close enough to follow up. There's a DD Brunette bot, though, that might be able to turn the tide. Wink. The tide. Some way. Kid kill on a hero that is otherwise very difficult. And Zombie. Getting full XP, having pulled this, uh, having this wave come into him, and I think it, it was him that pulled this, or maybe someone did it on accident. So zombie, really happy with this, with this outcome. Getting a full wave of XP, undenied, unhindered. Nubles now being bullied by the Winter Wyvern, a hero that I think does a much better job of it, as just one connection on the Arctic Burn is enough to really, really hurt an offlaner. Nubles will soon be level 5, though. So this brew, getting all the experience that he wants, and that's the overall goal of the offlane. Neo, though, also getting a lot of farm, as is the Death Prophet, but Terra Blade, another hero that is farming quite well. So the Terra Blade, uh, I think in a 1v1, six slots. <sighs> Hard to say. I think Terra Blade might be able to win because he can... Uh, because Terra Blade can Sunder. If he can break the Lincolns, which he'll have a Hurricane Pike, so he may be able to do that, maybe able to kill the Morphling, but it's it's difficult. He could also just be bursted down by the Morphling's adaptive strikes, so it will be difficult for him to just survive. Uh, I think in a in a one v one, just right click battle, Terra Blade wins. That's never going to happen against a Morphling. Once he gets that six, there is kill potential. He could find a primal split kill onto Donald. He doesn't have a lot of HP, but a ton of armor. So I think Brew could definitely kill this Terror Blade, given the proper opportunity. Of course, that could be said for really anybody. But now Nubles himself getting fairly low. The Clap doing a lot of damage, but he slowed up. Eats a wand charge and should be okay. I think he walks that one off. no longer cost mana, it does not. He was on the prowl with some phase boots, finds a Rubik, gets a nice crit. However, Spliff with the lift, how, uh, may, I don't think, unless he gets some lucky crits, he can kill him, but Neo finds first blood on the Tidehunter bot lane. So a good start to their safe lane. Death Prophet now at level 6 might be able to go for a kill on the Invoker or to pressure him out of lane and then try to get the tower. Speaking of hitting towers, terribly gets a little bit of chip damage up here. They've moved the Wyvern and the uh, Rubik up here, now running a tri lane. I think that's definitely the right call. Give your Tide Hunter some space to try to find level 6. The level 6 on Tide, equally as important as the Brewmaster level 6, uh, if not more so for Team America. Seems there are some technical difficulties. Hopefully, Mist is able to come back soon and we can get the game underway. Now, where were we? 
thankfully an unpause, and hopefully Death Prophet's issues are at an end and we can keep the game going. Root at level 3 gets a second rank in Jingu instead of the Tree Dance, so relying more, I think, on just the Jingu damage than trying to get a slow to set up for kills. Uh, maybe he wants to try to snipe a crow. Unfortunately for him, there isn't one coming. Uh, can they see this guy? I think this is the limit of dire vision. However, I think they should know this tree does not belong. Winter Wyvern also lurking around, maybe wanting to go for something, try to set up for a kill on this Death Prophet. Both these heroes might be a little bit difficult to kill, but the Donald apparently not so hard to kill as Newbles finds him, but thrown back into the tower. He might go down to the Rubik getting two crits. Newbles, one more hit should do it, but will he get him in the Fade Bolt? No, no chance for miss on that. But Root going for this Invoker as Mist gets gone on. The Cold Snap ticking him down. He needs to get a Spirit Siphon. Has a regen bottle too, so can get a lot of healing very, very quickly. Doesn't want to seem to use that yet. However, Root maybe overstaying his welcome. Gets Splinter Blasted and Tower Blasted. And Invoker finds a kill for himself. With the help of his friends, of course. Really, Rubik made that happen, but... Root forced to move in a little bit early because of the, the gank on his Death Prophet. Put him in an, in an unideal situation. He probably wanted to wait a little bit longer to go in, wait till the Invoker was maybe here, but instead had to go in with Invoker up here. Farm still looking very, very good for the Radiant Dire. Catching up a tiny bit on their Invoker, but he is still behind the Brewmaster. Now they want to get Zombie, Bound the Strike, Magic Missile. Do they have the damage to get this guy away from forward? There is no Adaptive Strike, but they don't need it. Neo can just right-click him to death through that Kraken Shell. Oh, Rubik, do you really want to pull that guy closer to you, Spiff? He might get killed if there's a crit. Even without one, he's slowed up, but Nubal's not wanting to dive too deep. Unfortunately for him, no crit and a Sun Strike just getting him. Nice play from Sicko. Can't kill the Death Prophet in your lane. Why not Sunstrike somebody else? No. Kill score completely even. 3-3. Three to three. But Radiant Core's farming better across the board than Dire Core's. And now Miss with a DD Rin and an Exorcism. May find this Tier 1 at least forcing out Fortification. How long is that Exorcism lasting? Well over half the duration left. Mist could definitely push again if he wants to. Neo at the top of the CS, pretty much tied with their uh, Death Prophet. Brewmaster also looking decent in terms of farm. He's behind the Terror Blade, but in the offlane, it's not expected of you to keep up. However, Root maybe wanting to tip the scales as Mist gets the Tier 1. They want to find this one position Terror Blade. He is very fast and. Even with the Boundless Strike, since it is only rank 1 and only a 0.4 second stun, just not enough time for them to get into position to kill him. Good effort though, but TB's base move speed is so, so high, but maybe he's overstayed his welcome. Sunder swapping him back. Donald trying to strike back with a vengeance, but Brew, Nubos has a primal split. Can definitely dive on that. Rubik TPing in, maybe going to discourage that. A Boundless Strike hitting just the Wyvern. Donald, no reflection, does have Conjure Image. I don't know if they can go for this Rubik. I don't know if you want to pull him in. They get the clap again. He's got split too. Hasn't used it yet. Just getting it off now after using that Soul Ring. Throwing the boulder onto this Terror Blade. They've got no heal. Rubik, some questionable telekinesis. Another boulder and a lift. And the Flaming Panda should be able to punch him to death. They find him and they will kill off that Terror Blade. And now Tidehunter rotating. They might be able to get a revenge kill as the Brew steps to respawn under his spirits. Underneath this tower, they use the Ravage just for good measure. They infuse Raindrops, keeping him healthy. He gets a clap and a lift too. They've got Fade Bolt in seven seconds. So no magical burst. Bound the strike, creating some space. Root himself needs to be careful. Almost has that Jingu Mastery. The Sun Strike connecting again on Sicko. And Root diving a little bit too deep. They get the Terror Blade, but it is a bit costly. A two for one. Although, a support and an offlane for the Terror Blade. The game says not quite worth it. They do keep the TB down, but give a little bit more gold to that Invoker. And overall net worth. Invoker is doing what he can to catch up. He's, he's got his Midas in his stash. And he's standing just outside of the... Uh, shrine, unfortunate for him. Fortifying to protect their bot tier one. Um, 
net worth. We see Neo on the top. His perseverance is complete. He is level 8. And 1,000 gold ahead of the Invoker with Mist. 400 gold ahead of the uh, Invoker as well. So both of these cores doing good for themselves. And Brewmaster not that far behind the Terrorblade. Only 400 gold. Dyer's bottom tower is in turmoil. Hunting for his phase boots as Invoker grabs his Midas root, looking to redeem himself for that gank. Wants to maybe get some of these heroes, but they've got no primal split. Not for 30 seconds. Terrorblade has Sunder too. This kill would not be easy to get. Trying to get the lift, throwing them back. Fade Bolt, Wave of Terror, trying to hit the enemy heroes. I don't think it connected onto anybody. Kung here now. No swap. Went 3-3-0-0. Excellent. Miss getting the spirit siphon on Tide. Tide does not mesh well with magic damage. My apologies for the for the uh, bit of a pause, and now a fight up at top. They've got the exorcism going. Donald getting a good Sunder, but it doesn't do anything. He gets erased by this exorcism and a crit. And a Sunstrike, though, finding a redemption kill, but Spliff going right down to hell, right where he belongs. The exorcism not going to do any damage through that Cold Embrace. However, a triple kill for Mist as the Crypt Swarm cuts right through the Cold Embrace, and the exorcism there eliminating the death, or the... Uh, Winter Wyvern, and now Exorcism, a fair amount of duration left. Miss going to get some good damage from the Exorcism on it, but there's not a ton of spirits at level 1, and soon they'll be returning to their Death Prophet. I think they should get this Tier 1. Oh, Nubles! Ooh, thank goodness that creep was there. It ate up just enough of that damage for Nubles to live. As Sunstrike damage is spread, Ravage hitting on Root and on Neo. Will they be able to get a kill on him while he's still down? They probably should have used the Flinter Bass on Root, but Root going to die, and Neo morphing some strength, or at least waveforming away to escape. Four heroes down here at the bot lane. They might try to claim a tier one of their own. There's no exorcism, but there's a primal split. And a 3k gold lead for Red, and almost as much experience. That fight, a small advantage gained for Team America, and they're going to need to bank on those small advantages. Neo, the illusion onto him. He can morph strength though. Wave of Terror revealing dire shenanigans. All five down here. They're gonna need to make something happen and they're gonna need to make it happen soon or they're wasting time without Ravage. A dive is optimistic at best and now Zombie getting a little over and head over uh, ahead of himself. The meatball rolling in doing a lot of damage to Neo and he just pops! And now it's Satanic Spliff getting low as DD Rune on this Death Prophet. Invoker hiding from this. Doesn't want anything to do with this encounter. However, the Yule is getting Magic Guy low. He's got a Cold Embrace, but the Spirit Siphon and the Crypt Swarm will finish him regardless. So Mist just dominating in this game. Red. Root scouting in the enemy jungle. Sees that they popped a shrine. No tree dance. Risky. I'd like I'd like to see a value point. Noobles tanking tower. Fortification coming out just a second too late. He's got primal split. There's no ravage, not for a minute. He stuns up that tide. Will they have the damage? They've got a bound to strike and a Wukong's command, but they're all running out of it. Spliff able to escape. Gets hit by a boulder and a cold embrace to protect him. A meatball rolling forward too. A silence onto the tide hunter in the back. Spirit siphon too. Zombie might be biting the bullet for his team. The tornado not going quite far enough. Wave of terror and the bound to strike finishes off zombie. Yule's on the death prophet defensive. The clap doing so much damage. They've got no thunder. Yes, they do. Can he get it off in time? He gets it onto root, but he doesn't get that low. And Root going to continue fighting up and taking a ton of damage. The Winter's Curse onto him. The Exorcism coming out just now. They're going to want to get away from this. And Sunder already committed. Donald not going to be able to protect himself from Mist. Mist getting low. He does hit the kill onto the Terror Blade. But popped as he goes under the tower. Not a lot of armor on that Death Prophet. And a 3 for 3 trade going even. Although I have a feeling Team America coming out on top in that as they are behind. Invoker surviving. Neo not there. So 4v5. And roughly 900 gold going the way of Team America. XP a little bit more significant, a little less significant, I should say, at 600. But 
when you're behind, even trades are good for you. So I think Team America will be content with that. I think it could have gone better for them. I think terribly dying is very, very bad for them. He is really far behind these cores. Uh, but the Invoker, Sicko, doing really, really nicely. He's almost got his Midas, only about 1,500 gold away. Not going to be much of anything to farm that for an Invoker. But... Terrorblade behind the Brewmaster in farm, and Neo and Mist continuing to get larger. Mist going for a Solar Crest. I love that item on Death Prophet. Uh, it makes her great against physical damage, like the Terrorblade. Even Invoker does a fair amount of physical damage. Um, but it lets her Exorcism Spirits do even more work to heroes and targets like Roshan. I would love to see them go for that Roche. Their team is so good at killing it with the Vengeful Spirit, Wave of Terror, and the Exorcism. Team America, less good at killing Roche, but damn, do they have a nice pit fight. Invoker, Tide, and Winter Wyvern. That could be real scary, real fast if they get caught unawares at Roshan. Dyer's bottom tower is on its way further down. <clears throat> Neo, now that he's completed his Lincoln Sphere, will be going for the standard shotgun morphling items, the Eagle Song. I think he finished that Lincoln's at a great timing, 18 minutes. Obviously, it could be faster, but I think this is a great timing. Uh, Death Prophet completing her Solar Crest 2, already has her Yules finished. Soon will be much harder for that Terrorblade to kill and make it much easier to kill that Terrorblade. Shredding his armor by, what is it, 10? And Terrorblade has 22 armor, so or 23 armor, so that's a pretty decent reduction for him. Well, Terrorblade doesn't have a bunch of base HP, he has a ton of armor, so great against physical damage, though. They've got great physical damage from the Death Prophet, even the Morphling Ride Clicks, and of course the Monkey King, but they've got magic damage in abundance, too, from Death Prophet, Spirit Siphon, and Crypt Swarm, the Brew Clap, the Magic Missile, and of course the Morphling Shotgun. But Team America only 5k gold behind. Not impossible. However, a good Roshite could turn things for them. Monkey King wants to scout. They might be aware of this Roche happening. But their heroes are all bought. There's no blink on the Tide Hunter. Invoker, no Sunstrike wound up. And they massacre Roche and immediately smoking. Want to go find some heroes. They might find a couple good ones too. Invoker and Terrorblade were in the neighborhood, but now escaping. It could be that one of these supports pays the Piper. Yules onto the Rubik. Can they get the can they get the silence and the spirit siphon to jump forward? Winter's curse coming out onto the Death Prophet. She doesn't have the Aegis! They put it on Neil! That oh no, what a beautiful winner's curse for Magic Guy. Really wonderful trade for them. Uh Neo tanking that Roshan for most of it. Just gets killed off by her own morphling. An excellent Windows Curse coming out for a Magic Guy, and that's just the kind of thing you have to be worried about with your positioning when your heroes are low against a Winter Wyvern. EMP, will it come out? A great Wukong's Command has three heroes in it, but perhaps just zoning. It's 4v4. So they're down their Death Prophet, and there's still a Ravage Kung. Gets the Magic Missile. Ravage coming out onto all four heroes. A lot of damage to the Hairblade Metamorph. Getting Kung destroyed. The split coming up. A Neo very low. Morphing Strength. He still has an Aegis 2. Bruce Spirits getting the Tornado onto the Donald. He purchases it off. Magic Missile going to get eaten by the Lincoln Spear Ho. Doing what he can. Zombie trying to keep them slowed up. Gets the Anchor Smash, but it gets but no real damage yet. And now it's the Bruce Spirits getting extremely low. One more hit from the Terror Blade. And that Brew Panda dies. Death Prophet respawning. She's trying to get those Spirit Siphons off the Sunder onto him right away. And then, oh, just barely getting out of that in time. He still has his Aegis alive. The Spirit Siphon's draining some health, getting some damage in too. And now they're trying to get Magic Guide low. Neo still alive, just dodging that Sunstrike. And the Yule's protecting the Death Prophet from it. It's the Morphling getting the kill. Anubis getting the kill onto the Rubik. Now they're trying to find some more. This Ice Wall will slow things down, literally and figuratively, and perhaps a disengage from both sides. But after the Death Prophet death, the next fight goes to Red. Red winning that one fairly well. Only losing their Morphling, or, or sorry, their Ventral Spirit, keeping the Aegis. And more. Uh, Neo, gotta be careful, bud. Miss just going in deep. I appreciate his gusto, but overconfidence is dangerous. Especially against 
a, a Ravage, a Winter's Curse, as we saw before. Uh, all those control spells could really, really, really make for an unhappy Death Prophet. Morphling, though, Ghost Scar Scepter done. About 2k gold from Eagle Song. Excellent. Dyer's middle tower is in the wrong end of business. Zombie with the blink done, gonna get some better ravages. Dyer's Left on Dead Monkey King. Do they have anyone attack. to get him? Rubik with that isn't bad. I think Tree Dance is a fine Rubik spell, and he gets a nice cheeky deny on the Arcane Rain. I think Rubik's are happy with any sort of um. Uh, that was a cute animation. Are happy with any sort of mobility spell. Um, he can easily get around the map now. Maybe get in position with a primal spring to get a, get a good lift. So an interesting spell for the Rubik to have. I think maybe one of the slightly better ones for him to steal. Bound the strike, magic missile. Um, and that are probably the best spells for him. Swap also very good. He sees Neo. He's getting pinged. Neo saw him too. The Brew Pandas getting in on the Donald, but it's the Brew Pandas themselves getting a little bit low. He's walking the Earth Pando away. Magic Guy cold embracing himself. Morphling waveforming away to get out of that EMP. Do they want to try to fight this though? He's very close to his Eagle Song and may not want to risk losing a fight, even though he has the Aegis. So they could do either, and Death Prophet with a DD rune and an Exorcism for the second time this game. Grabbing a tier 2 tower bot. Pushing the allied morphling closer to his eagle song and thus the ethereal blade. Root after Crimson Guard. Great item, I think, in just in general. But this game does good against Terror Blade, especially. Does alright against Invoker. I imagine one of them will go for Pipe. Uh, there's a lot of magic damage, but Nubles queuing up the Radiance. Death Prophet, Spirit Siphon, Health Siphon over the cast range. Venge at level 10 went for Wave of Terror armor. You, the Wave of Terror build on Venge is actually very, very good. Um, the 10 and 15 talents make it pretty nice. I mean, it's 120 damage, magic damage every 4 seconds. That gives vision and reduces armor. It, it's a great spell to spam. And it's cheap. So it can add up pretty quickly in fights. And of course, the minus armor contributing a lot too. Wonder Wyvern hasn't picked up a talent yet. Three, seven, nine, ten. Yeah, so she's gonna wait till eleven to pick one up. Invoker getting Chaos Meteor contact damage. I wonder if that means when it initially lands, or if they get if it rolls onto them. I'm not sure. He's got his max exort, so a lot of bonus damage from that alacrity, and a lot of damage on all his spells. When Morph has agility, Morphs, he's gonna be need to be very, very careful. Uh, just because the damage Invoker can do is really, really crazy, though. Morphling, 2k gold ahead of him and 3k ahead of his own Death Prophet, almost doubling, just about doubling, more than doubling the net worth of the Terror Blade. Had to do some quick math. I am very, very bad at math. I do apologize. Monkey King with the Tree Dance AoE Vision AoE. I think that's pretty good. Makes him like a, a, a moving ward. When a Wyvern went for her GPM. Neo with agility and attack speed. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. There's two tier the two towers left. Fortification. Try to deny the invoker the satisfaction of getting gold at all for his team. Oh, zombie in a very good position, but will he get spotted? They're trying to slow up Nubles. Did Nubles see the tide? I'm not sure that he did. If they push in as five, they could get a really good Ravage here. But it looks like Red perhaps going to disengage. They at least have to wait for their next creep wave, which is a fair distance away. How much do they want to try to get this tier 2 tower? And they're going to need to be careful. Tide. Lying in wait. The shotgun coming in. Morph getting huge damage onto that invoker. But the tornado will prevent any follow-up. Invoker has a ton of regen if he morphs Quas. Went for the alacrity. Get him back to the fountain instead. Can TP in 3 seconds. Oh, Wave of Terror does spot the Tide. So they know that he was up to some tricks. Morphling trying to farm up this big stack. Not the best hero at clearing stacks, but would be a huge hit to the economy of Team America. That's a really big comeback mechanic for them as they're now 9k gold behind Nubles. 
trying to get the Primal split off, but the Cold Snap stopping him as much as they can. The Wukong's command coming out. The Exorcism missed. They get a swap onto the Invoker. Do they have the damage to kill him, though? The Terror Blade also over here in a really strange spot. Tidon not able to get in for a Ravage as the team is isolated. They're getting Sicko very, very low, but Donald the Metamorphed gets hit by a Boulder. Death Prophet zoning away enemies. They position the Pandas to do the same, and now they get the Spirit Siphon onto this Terror Blade. They really want to get this guy. They've got a Boulder up to stunning, but they don't want to get in that deep. The Ravage just hitting the Brewmaster, and it looks like Nubles will pay for his life. The Tornado knocking him in the air again. The Sun Strike 2 just in case, but the Tornado going to finish him already. The Colts. The Witcher's Curse coming out, and a stolen Primal Split on him. They get a Sunder onto Miss. Miss using herself. Doesn't have the Spirit Siphon off. The Spirit's returning, keeping her healthy. But Morphling zipping in and deleting that Terror Blade. And now it's the Winter's Wyvern on the run. Will that last right click do the trick? And indeed it does. But Kung will die to the Rubick. The stolen Primal Split. He managed to get something done with it. But it was not cheap. And it was certainly not free. A two for three exchange. And it seems just barely, although it doesn't count the Rubick death, favoring Team Red. XP, similar story, only about 500 swing. They get the Tier 2 tower and 500 gold in the bank. Sicko, got to be careful, buddy. A lot of nuke damage. The Boundless Strike, he's got a waveform. And Neo's shotgun blows his head right off. Ending the wicked, strict, wicked six streak of this invoker is otherwise done incredibly well, especially considering how far behind his the rest of his team is. But... I just don't know if it's going to be enough by himself competing with the Death Prophet and the Morphling who can one combo him. The tier 2 mid, basically dead. One hit from Death. Mist coming in, trying to get that right click. Gets the last hit. All tier 2's down. They've got 35 seconds or so until Exorcism is back. Will they try to push without it? Roshan also alive. Another objective they could go for. Lotus Orb on this DP. Opting for defensive items over damage items. The Lotus Orb can do really, really crazy work this game, especially against the Winter's Curse. If she Winter's Curses herself, she will die. I believe it can also reflect a Splinter Blast, but I don't know how much that will actually matter. But Morphling trying to get the kill on the Rubik. His Magic Resist Aura saving him for now. They get the Adaptive Strike Neo. Morphing Strength wants to keep healthy, but taking a switch over to the Tide Hunter. And we'll go back to his regular old self. Sicko. 1,500 gold in the bank, but still 5,000 gold behind Neo's Morphling, who is just so far ahead. Closing in on an eye of Scotty, too. They're not even going to care seeing this. Look, look how much damage they do to this Roach. All that armor shred they've got on him. And a DD rune on Neo, too. He picked up the cheese. Immediate Lotus Orb on herself to dissuade any counter engagement. With this Aegis and Cheese, will they be able to go high ground? They've still got that DD for a little while on Neo. He may want to make something of it. And Sicko out of position, hiding himself in Viz. They've got no detection. They might have dust on somebody, but it doesn't seem so. Neo turning back on to Sicko, getting him low. The Cold Snap slowing him up. The Ravage onto four heroes, almost five. Death Prophet, a swap coming out. The Exorcist coming in, so is the Wukong's command. They get the stun onto this Invoker. Invoker going to die. Sicko has buyback. He might need to use it right away. Metamorph coming out from the Donald, but how much are they going to be able to do against this? Morphling still fighting in deep. These Bruce Spirits trying to just delay any kind of engagement. And a zip forward from the Morph. Neo has this Aegis too. He's not showing any fear. The Lincolns and the Zip. He blows up the Terror Blade. He may be forced to buyback too. They've got no Ravage, but the Winner's Curse coming out. They get that kill onto the Donald. But he buys back too. And now Zombie dead. The Exorcism still going for a few seconds more. Nubles getting low. It looks like that Winner's Curse didn't hit anyone, but it looks like it really didn't see. Maybe they got it on the Milton who got that Lincolns. And now forcing those two, maybe three buybacks. One, two buybacks. They've still got Aegis on the morph. His shotgun combo ready and up to go again. An immediate blink back. Venge dies. But will they still be able to push? Fortification available. Do they stop pushing or do they want to keep the go keep it going? Fight through this. They've got two catapults here. They've got great wave clear and a ton of damage. Neo also level 20 with the waveform attacking targets. Even more burst. Look at the damage he does with one Eth Blade. The mid racks fall and a 19k gold lead now for Team Red. Look at this. The graph just... Ugh. 
not a pretty sight. An almost exclusive climb in favor of Team Red. XP, the exact same graph pretty much. They're so far ahead. And now Scotty on Neo. Even more damage, even more tankiness on this morph. Death Prophet sitting on 3k. Could go Octarine Core, BKB, um, Shiva's Guard. All good items, I think. Spirit Vessel finished for the Vengeful Spirit. But with one good team fight combo, Team America might be able to make a comeback. It won't be easy, though. Smoked up. They want to get Neo. He's gotten Aegis. His Lincoln's pops. He knows something is up. They've got no Ravage the Gush, and he deletes the Rubik. The Sun Strike gets the Aegis. And now they have to get through that second life. Do they have the damage? Do they want to back off after the Aegis? Are they just happy with that? But Neo, he's not. Or is he? He's going to run away too. He doesn't want to risk losing his real life. Or maybe we'll wait for somebody to lurk around. We'll see. But at the top lane, his team grouping up. They've got an Exorcism, which means they might want to go for a tower. She's going for a Lincoln Spear now to make her an even less attractive target. Just completing his Eye of Scotty, Neo now queuing up a big Black King bar. And he's pretty close to it. Instead, instantly buying the travels. Doesn't want to have to carry those pesky TP scrolls around. Always refreshing. <sighs> Relic done on doubles. Oh. My apologies. We'll soon have his Radiance. Terribly buying the Tome. Did he eat it himself or is he giving it to his supports? In this circumstance, in a, in a team game, in a game where everybody knows each other, at least in theory, I think I could see them giving it to their Terrorblade. He is so far behind. Only 7k net worth. Three times less. A third of the net worth of Neo's Morphling. He has a ton of agility. And if that's the real Terrorblade, he could die. Wave from forward. The shot. Ugh. That was filthy and sicko. Do they have the silence, the sun, the dust? Some great ravage on the four heroes, but the extra some damage. It's a lot. Winner's curse on one, but it pushes her away. Root getting disarmed too. Not going to help them get any damage onto them. Venge trying to get in there and try to get more damage done, but she just dies instead. Sicko low, getting low. Will the Venge spirit kill him? It won't, but the spirit siphon and the exorcism doing so much damage. Zombie trying to escape the gush, trying to slow up the spirit siphon, keeping him close in his double kill for missing. They've got no buybacks. And Spiff stuck in that exorcism, the worst place to be. The boulder smash too, and a triple for missed. Only Sicko alive, and I'm not sure that they can hang on for much longer. Bot Rack's gone. Top Rack's about to be. And it appears in Invoker also gone. GG. Definitely in the near future. Team Merigo holding on, perhaps trying to strategize a little bit, trying to decide what they want to do in this next game. But almost 30,000 gold, and surely to be 30,000 gold behind once all these racks and all these towers fall. Ancient exposed, and Mega's coming in. They're just ignoring the Ancient. Trying to fountain dive. Assert their dominance, but fortunately the creeps are there to finish it up. As said in the chat, we will have a short 10 minute break probably between matches. Team Red claiming this game in a pretty dominant fashion. And we'll be back with game two very, very soon. I hope you guys have enjoyed it so far because we'll be right back. And Team Red looking strong, looking poised to 2-0 Team America in the second game.